Now, all right. Thank you very much. I'm going to introduce the student speaker. This is right in your um, this is right in your pamphlet. So I'm reading it straight from the. I know uh, you have it here, but I'm going to read it. Leo Primru is a senior from Groton, Massachusetts. His journey at Landmark started in the fall of 2019, right before COVID. Right before COVID, where he eagerly began pursuing a bachelor's degree in psych. Leo is currently the assistant coordinator of the Stonewall Center for LGBTQIA+, the co-chair of the Campus Pride Index, Title IX student advisor, resident assistant of Frost Hall. Over the su this summer, Leo was also an advisor in residence for Landmark's summer high school program. A few of his hobbies include songwriting, playing guitar. You gonna play the guitar? Do any? I don't have it with me. All right, maybe next, next time. You didn't tell me. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't. December graduation. You, you can play it then. Fair enough. All right, good. It's a, no, no, you can do it for the other people. Just yeah, okay. love it. Skateboarding, you're not doing that at December graduation. Uh, <laughs> reading and astrology. Leo is terrific. Come on up, Leo. Before I begin, I just want to say that when I was in your seat, my first convocation, there are at least 108 students total. There are now 175 new faces currently on campus, and those numbers are incredible. Give yourself a round of applause. I know President Eden already introduced me, but my name is Leo Premru. My pronouns are he, him, his, and I am a seventh semester landmark student. I knew as early as elementary school that I learned differently. I'm naturally a slow writer. My second grade math teacher made it unprofessionally clear that I struggled with the subject, and my social skills were misunderstood by many. By the time I was eight years old, I could feel my confidence begin to wane. I occasionally felt successful with my work. I considered showing vulnerability a weakness. I started masking my stims, such as repetitive hand movements, and isolated myself from most of my peers. I distinctly remember the misty fall afternoon when I received my ADHD diagnosis. It was, coincidential, it was coincidentally the day, the same day that I was informed about my autism and specific math disability. My 12-year-old self was in denial at first. I was still socially awkward, easily hyperactive, and felt like I couldn't do math without a calculator. The last thing I wanted was more labels to describe my misunderstood neurodiversity. Or in other words, the last thing I wanted at the time was more judgment from others, including myself. The following day, which I also consider a coincidence, a classmate caught me unintentionally stimming while working independently. She had told me to stop because she found my movements distracting. I immediately replied with, I, immediately replied with, I can't help it sometimes, I'm autistic. What is autism, she asked. This interaction further changed my mindset. I soon realized my neurodiversity was more than just a set of labels. Knowing my neurodiversity meant I could understand myself. I had finally been given the vocabulary I never had, but always desired. As I progressed through my town's public school system, it was clear I couldn't thrive in the rigorous academic environment. I was enrolled in a local charter school <clears throat> for high school instead, which changed my life completely. I was widely accepted and supported. I started attending my IEP meetings, my entire friend group was neurodiverse, and I was an active member in my high school's Gay Straight Alliance and Garage Band. <sighs> Y'all are making me wish I brought my guitar now. <laughs> Whatever doubts I had about graduating and attending college were subsiding by my junior year. However, I still had fears about thriving within a college atmosphere. Reflecting back on my first semester at Landmark in fall of 2019, the most meaningful advice I received was a class comment from my first professor towards the end of the semester. She wrote, if you paid attention and if you contributed in class, you have the potential to become a leader. You have the potential to become a great leader. Previous teachers had mentioned my leadership potential to me, though I never took their words seriously. I believe that class comment stuck with me because I was in the right environment to receive it. I believe I listened because deep down, pushing past my doubt, I knew I could succeed here if I gave myself a chance. I'm gonna repeat that because I think it's very important. I knew I could succeed here if I gave myself a chance. Upon entering my seventh semester at Landmark and the start of my senior year, the leadership positions I currently uphold are the assistant coordinator for the Stonewall Center, which is the LGBTQIA community on campus, 
um, a Title IX student advisor, the co-chair for Landmark's Campus Pride Index, and as of this month, I've joined the residential life team in Frost Hall. <laughs> Despite keeping these prof this professor's words in my back pocket, what led me to partake in student activism on campus was following my passions for social work and social change. I've learned that by changing the communities you're a part of, you'll end up changing the world. Landmark's community thrives on student input inside and outside of the classroom. The administration at Landmark encourages us and gives us the opportunity to have our voices heard and they listen. The CDI community, the Centers for Diversity and Inclusion, the Palante Center, the Latina, the Latina Center, Reach One, Teach One program, Title IX Advisory Board, and Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion training all started because students advocated for their needs, which reflect our community's needs. If you see something, say something. If you're struggling academically or emotionally, reach out. If you have an idea for a new school club, speak up. Your voice matters on this campus. No matter how big or small, you have an impact here. The beginning of my parting words are tattooed on the inside of my arm. They say, Somos al cambio, which translates from Spanish to we are the change. These words are the motto of the Bate Foundation, an organization I worked for in the Dominican Republic through my high school. Being one of many groups to help build a school for Haitian refugees, it was through this program that I first realized maybe I was capable of initiating change. Maybe I am capable of being a leader. Landmark simply fueled the fire I already have within me. My hope to you, new sharks, is you allow your truest self to unfold here, no matter how long it takes. Thank you.